Yeah, hey guys, this is uh, Dan, better known as uh, El Diablo on um, on Discord and uh, in the, the the Chromecraft staff team. And I just wanted to give a little development overview on what we're doing right now. Right now, uh, one of the other uh, devs and staff members has been working on refactoring um, a very large part of um, Hygel and I myself uh, took the liberty to do the final remaining Bosch script which is Archimond and uh, to be completely honest I'm I'm not that well known with the vibe myself but it was very interesting um, to to learn about and uh, you can see a little bit of footage of me fighting with uh, with the boss with one of my test characters on the side uh, as you can see I've already fought him prior because I've got the debuff ticking um, I'm using the commands to not take any damage which are very useful in Azeroth core as you can see as we pick up the boss uh, it immediately goes to my helper character which um, is standing to the side but when I deal damage to the boss obviously it will go to him uh, what I wanted to showcase is a little bit is the spells that Archimonde uses and uh, this is in no means <laughs> a final product uh, it, it could be that we still need to do some work on it, but uh, as aside, I wanted to show you the fight uh, as it is in Azeroth Azure Core right now with the, the pull request that I just worked on. And a little bit of insight into the code. Uh, the most interesting part about the code of this fight uh, would be the, uh, the, the, the part where um, the soul charges are gained. So you can see that here, uh, one of my characters dies, you see this little animation, and you can see the soul charge, which is being used. If more people die though, it, he will essentially bulk up the soul charges and he will have a random order of firing them. Uh, and we'll look into that in a little bit. But uh, that's by far the most interesting part of this fight to me, at least. You can see again, soul charge being captured, and of course because it's one, there's a timer to fire it, and this time it took quite some time to fire, and there you can see it's being applied. Um, yeah, that is most of it for this fight. You can see the flames moving towards you. Uh, as I said, in no, we, no, <laughs> they seem a little bit too fast, uh, as they should be, in my opinion, but honestly, I don't know. We'll have to look into that, but uh, that's where you guys come in. And here you see a little bit of... Um, of what happens when you bring them down to 10% because then it will be you get the RP piece all the players will be protected uh, with a shield and uh, you can see the wisps falling in and the wisps they start channeling their ability on him um, yeah they start casting ancient spark on him which is obviously well behind the scenes doing some damage and we're all protected from this ability as he starts blasting it at us. He's not able to withstand all the damage the wisps are doing and he dies. In a minute. Any second now. Alright. There he goes. There we go. That's the fight. Um, yeah, let's have a little look into the code now. So here we can see the most important um, part of this spell that I just talk, talked about. So essentially what we're doing is every time uh, a player dies, this is being called. And we are feeding the player to the map. So this is how that works in C++. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to look for the class and depending on what class we have... Um, we are going to add red, yellow, or green soul charges to the boss. Uh, in this case, the player is actually casting a spell on the boss, which is me, because we are working uh, in the object uh, of the boss AI, which means me refers to everything the boss creature is, which in this case is our command. So essentially the spell is being cast and it, this adds the aura to the boss. So I thought it was important, this was not an original code, but I was, it was important to add uh, Death Knight for me. Uh, just to make sure that if someone wanted to do something with Death Knights, even though it would be like a custom implementation, uh, you can do that here easily. 
Uh, also, class none is apparently a class that's present in the enum for for the classes, uh, and of course we want to still want to have default here. So what we're going to do every time we're going to add this aura, and in between two and ten seconds we're going to do unleash soul charge. So if let's look at the method that is actually being called when we call unleash soul charge between ten and ten seconds. So this is actually the most interesting part. Uh, of this whole mechanic. Uh, how I decided to do it in this case is essentially uh, I start off with an array that has all these uh, aura IDs. We're going to iterate over it um, and we're going to essentially check whether the boss has one of these auras. Uh, then we're going to have two you cannot see them defined here but these are private uh, vectors so essentially every time we find uh, that the boss has this aura, we push them back. We push back um, the aura in available auras and we push back the spell that's related to it in available spells. Now when we've done that, for instance if we have only the purple aura, uh, we will have uh, only the purple aura in this uh, vector, in these vectors as well, and only the purple spell. So what we're obviously going to have to do afterwards is, it could be that the boss, this runs quite often, uh, it could be that the boss, well actually this only runs after um, we kill someone. So very likely there will be something in there, but with these kind of codes, uh, it's quite important to be careful with certain things. So there might be a situations where these auras are not empty. So we need to check first whether both of them are not empty. Otherwise we cannot start doing operations on them. So essentially they will always have at least one item in them, but it may be possible that they are still empty due to some kind of bug or, or something happening there. Um, so what I'm doing here is essentially the way I decided to make this random is essentially coi flipping a coin. So this U rand will either be 0 or 1. Uh, if we do if zero, it will n it will not work. If we do if one, it will work. So it's just a coin flip. What we do is at the beginning of the vector, we will uh, put the back element and take the back element out. So essentially, what we do is we take the last element and put it in front. So we have a 50% chance of this happening for both of them. Uh, and what we do then is we simply take that one, the one in front, and we remove that aura, and we cast a spell that's related to that as well because all the operations are exactly the same in the order they happen it will cast the same spell as the aura and of course we finally want to clear these vectors anyway because we're going to fill them back up anyway next time we check this anyway so uh, it's important to clear them otherwise they will keep piling up and we don't want that so yeah it's uh, it's a little bit complex but it's an interesting way of doing it and there's probably a, very, uh, a smarter and simpler way of doing it but this is the way I uh, designed it for now We'll see what happens in the future. So to give a little bit of a clearer overview of what this is ex exactly does is, uh, well, you can see me failing here, uh, <laughs> using some GM commands to, uh, to revive me back up, but uh, I wanted to show a little bit what this looks like. Uh, in the beginning you could see the druid got killed, and um, yeah, you could see the green uh, charge there. I think that should be from the druid. Yeah. Um, so here you here we go again. Revive them all. Put cheat god on myself and not on the other one. So they should be dying uh, soon. Uh, now obviously some things might might be a little bit wonky here. Uh, obviously there's no way of me to simulate uh, combat accurately. So um, we'll we'll see if it actually works when we've got it live on the PTR. Uh, but you can see that when people are killed most of the time an aura is added um, and that aura is used by the boss in this case you see that it didn't happen which is unfortunate but it might be because of some weird way of dying uh, a weird way of, of the uh, players dying so that might be the issue there but um, in, in, in normal general combat these soul charges should be accurately added um, if if people are killed by either spells or not. 
I think me casting revive on <laughs> on these players randomly also doesn't really help because the the threat list on this guy uh, and the way just died is being determined might be a little bit messed up here but here you can see it got a soul charge and it uses it got off the uh, the paladin that died there so yeah uh, here you can see that mechanic in play unfortunately with um, doing it by myself it's not really easy to uh, see the soul charges in action um, but yeah that's kind of the the gist of it